Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I'm gonna go over ozone and ozone therapy and ozone interventions because Shannon Carmage, my PA, who does um, joint injections and other things, uh, and myself spent five solid days listening to Dr. Frank Schallenberger in Reno, Nevada um, about ozone and doing advanced ozone training. Um, I've been to an advanced ozone conference in early April. Uh, we'd had our formal training prior year. Um, we've been a training site now for advanced ozone administration through soap med because for a variety of reasons they like us. So, but going to this concert or this concert, <laughs> going to this conference was great because this guy, Frank Schellenberger is the father of ozone therapy really in the United States. Very smart man, 76 and gave five days of eight hour lectures <laughs> like this, going through basic science techniques and everything. And so really interesting stuff. People don't know about ozone because the FDA doesn't like ozone, which is fine. Think of ozone or ozone treatments um, are adjuvant therapies of things that you can add on to standard therapies. They are not, it's not meant to replace therapies that are standard, but it can augment effects. So what happens? Ozone is, O3, it has an extra electron. So in the uh, atmosphere, when radiant energy comes in, it hits uh, the ozone layer and absorbs those electrons and deactivates them so the radiant energy doesn't come down and irradiate us and damage us. So in one part, it can absorb inflammation, I don't wanna say inflammation, but electrons that are active that can damage us. But then there's this concept that's really important called hormesis. There's homeostasis where things are in balance. Hormesis is when you use a little something to agitate to stimulate healing so or stimulate restorative effects. So what you can do with ozone is you can inject it into places. You can draw blood and put it in the blood. You don't ever put ozone directly in someone IV and push it in. It's reasonably safe to do, but that is not how you do it. It's wrong, so we, don't, we would never do that. And no one in the United States should be doing that, but that's my opinion. Um, and also the opinion of the American uh, Ozone Therapy Society or whatever it's called. So, but what you can do is you can draw blood, put ozone in it, and that energizes the blood with a higher concentration of oxygen and electrons. You run that through an ultraviolet light machine and that really agitates the electrons. And then when those electrons go into your body, they formed with lipids, um, lipid ozonides, which then will go into the cell and then go into the mitochondria. And then when they go into the mitochondria, you have, think of a mitochondria as like a pumpkin pie. Through one part of it, you have the ozonides coming in or the highly energized electrons with the oxygen. The other side, you have something called NAD, uh, nicotinamide acid, and then they merge in the middle with then B vitamins and CoQ10 and zinc and iodine and DHEA and cortisol and out secretes ATPs or energy packets. So it energizes the mitochondria to produce ATPs, which makes the cells work better which makes the tissues work better, which makes the body work better. So it's a rehabilitative strategy just for the body and organs and stuff like that. But the electrons also do separate things. They pop each cell and go, wake up, wake up, wake up. So cells start to release antioxidant reactive elements, about 250 of them. So people can take antioxidants orally all they want. If you actually look at how those work, it's very minimum when you look at any kind of serum change or effect when you use um, ozonated blood, it is a very potent change in your antioxidant reactive element secretions. Number two, you reverse your NERF2 messaging from being pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. Um, so again, a change in how inflammation is processed. And then fourth, your oxygen utilization, getting back to the mitochondria changes. So you start to use oxygen much more efficiently. Um, so it speeds up cellular metabolism, potentially your metabolism too. And so your, uh, again, energy's better, your performance is better, uh, thus and so. Kind of what Lance Armstrong was doing, but um, he was doing it way more in, in a crazy way in terms of taking extra units of blood and doing it and everything. This is 
as an adjuvant for medical therapies, or I shouldn't say medical therapies, I, we should say adjuvant options for regeneration and restoration uh, function. So we can do it through an IV um, with blood, or we can inject it into a joint space with some other materials, or we could inject it, we inject it into the bladder, we can infuse it into the bladder, we can put it in, we can use it for any area that's damaged or inflamed to try to work through some regeneration of the body's functions to get those areas to feel better. Real interesting. Uh, something you can talk to your provider about at Optimal Health. We've had some unbelievably uh, wonderful results with it on different things. But again, it's always in context to some standard plans in medicine and using it appropriately to help the plans that people are already doing or consider doing work even better. So it's an adjuvant restorative process. So thank you.